<laughs> All right, um, I think we we'll probably get started. Um, so, my name is Caleb Sykes. Um, this is the statistics and FRC uh, theoretical presentation. There's um, kind of two complementary presentations one I'm giving right now, and one I'll be giving tomorrow. The one tomorrow is um, a little bit more kind of practical aspects of how to do some of these. Uh, statistics. Um, this is a little bit more theoretical. This is how you calculate some of these and kind of trying to get you a deeper understanding of what they mean. Um, so let, I'll just pass some of these around first. So I have here, I should probably, don't get too isolated from everybody, you should probably be next to a couple other people, um, but these are just pass them around. Um, but these are worksheets. Uh, I'm going to work them through later in the presentation. But it's uh, I'm going to show you guys how to calculate uh, OPR or um, calculated contributions uh, by hand. Um, just roughly on a, on a limited data set. But we'll we'll get to that in a second. Um, but uh, let's get some other stuff out of the way first. Um, so. Who am I? Uh, I'm Caleb Sykes. I was on two different FRC teams up in Minnesota. My qualifications for this are basically that I played around a lot with FRC statistics. <laughs> um, I have electrical engineering degrees, which don't really relate exactly. And I'm currently unemployed. So, <laughs> <laughs> wow, what a what a great what a great set of qualifications. But yeah, yeah if you have if you have job openings, let me know. I'm on, on the job front right now. Um, Quick definitions here. Um, OPR, most of you have probably heard of it. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's an initialism for offensive power rating. Uh, I use it interchangeably with calculated contribution because I don't like the name OPR. Um, a half match is all of the match data for one alliance. So it's like the blue alliance, all of the different scores and everything that happens with the blue alliance or the red alliance. Um, we'll get to that, why that's important later. Um, and ELO, um, I'll talk more about what that is later, but ELO is not as standardized as OPR, so when I talk about ELO, I'm talking about the ELO rating system that I specifically developed. Um, but there's nothing special about mine, it's just the one I'm most familiar with, so it's the one I'm gonna be talking about. Um, so why do we want metrics? Uh, basically, you should go check out my other presentation for why, why we want them. Um, there are cool things you can do with metrics that you can't do with just conventional scouting data. Um, and I can talk a lot more about those in kind of the other presentation. But uh, I spend a lot of time with them because I think they're fun to work with. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so let's get into it then. So, we're going to start with calculated contributions, or OPRs. Um, and with any of these kind of metrics, what you need to do first is you need to make some kind of assumptions. You have all this data, and you have to find a way to try to filter all the data down into you know, some kind of representative uh, data point, some kind of metric. Okay, so. Here are the assumptions, broadly, that are made for OPR. And then with those assumptions, we can move forward. Um, and I can show you how to actually calculate. But there's nothing, there's nothing inherently like right about these assumptions. They're, they're assumptions. We just, these seem like good guesses of things that are true. So we assume them, and then we can move forward. If, you're, uh, if you've worked with math before, um, uh, like geometry or something, you have, um, oh, I forget what they're called now. Uh, but you have like theorems, whatever the first step is, the very first things that you have. What are they called? Postulates. Post postulates? Yeah. Are, are postulates the, the lowest? The one? Um, I, that might be it. I actually can't remember now. Um, but anyway, if you're going to do anything with data, you have to you have to make some kind of assumption at the at the start. Um, and so these are the assumptions we make for calculated contributions. Um, so those are we want to represent each team's strength with some kind of one single metric. Um, 
if we can only have one, we'd like to have something that broadly uh, is uh, an arithmetic mean or average of the match score or of whatever the data point is we're looking at. Um, we're going to combine contributions to uh, individual contributions linearly and equally weighted for all teams. So there are other ways you could do it, but this is the most straightforward is just to assume that, assume linearity is assume that every team um, has has equal impact on, on the match broadly. Not that they have the same uh, calculated contributions, but that they're no no team is worth more than more or less than one team when they're out of the field. Um, uh, we're only allowed to look at one data point per half match, so you can look at, for example, the blue total score. Or you could look at blue penalty points, or you could look at um, blue uh, end game points, or something like that. But you just get one one data point per half match. Um, and uh, all the data must come from a finite set of quals matches in within one season. Actually, it doesn't. I guess it wouldn't have to be all in one season. You could try to calculate some kind of like OPR or something, combining multiple seasons data. But that seems silly to me. But you could. Um, you need at least as many half matches as teams in the data set. So if you have. 30, let's, let's say 40 teams at an event, like at a district event. Um, you need then at least 40 half matches or 20 full matches before you can actually perform this kind of calculation. If you ever look at uh, the Blue Alliance, uh, they and they have like OPRs listed for teams, in the first 20 or 30 matches, uh, you, I think it just displays zero for those because you can't actually do the kind of calculations we're looking to do when you don't have you don't have enough data points when there aren't enough uh, half matches for for teams, um, and we just kind of ignore surrogate teams and disqualified teams uh, for the OPR calculations. Like, I mean, not ignore them like they're not there. We just don't treat them differently from other other teams. So. Um, you don't have to make that assumption, but that's the standard that everybody uses when calculating OPR. So that's what everybody does now, because everybody wants to uh, stick with the standard, and it's an assumption. Um, OK, so OPR uh, at its root is something called linear regression, which is a common statistical tool. Um, and as such, there's a lot of different ways to calculate it. I'm going to talk about three different ways to calculate it here, um, but these are not exhaustive. There's plenty of other ways that you can do it because it has such strong mathematical foundations. It's, there's a lot of different ways you can get to calculating OPR, but I'm going to talk about uh, three different ones here. Okay, so this is the first one, and this is going to be the one we're going to work on through our worksheets with. So the idea here is um, we're going to find each team's average score from their matches, but then instead of just looking at their average score, we're, gonna, we're going to look at how good their partners are um, and what their partners' average scores are and use that to kind of make a better average for what, how much that team is contributing. Because if you always have poor partners in your matches, then your, your average score uh, effectively, the average contribution uh, is higher for you because you're pulling more weight. Um, so yeah, we'll be working through these worksheets. I think it, it would be wise to pull out some uh, calculator app and groups of probably two or five, two to five people or so. Um, this sheet I have for you is the simplest non-trivial example I could get uh, to show you how all this works. But all of the ideas here that we're going to be talking about apply to FRC OPRs, or calculated contributions. So notice in these schedules I gave you, there's only you know, two teams per half match. You know, that it's, it still works fine with three teams per half match. And it still works fine with 80 or 100 or 1,000 matches instead of just um, the couple of matches I put on there. OK, so the first step on the worksheet uh, we need to, I've already done this one for you, 
you come up with an initial guess for the match scores for for the estimated scores and the estimated OPRs. So uh, I put those in, and my guess for everything is just zero because it's just <laughs> an easy guess, and uh, it'll hopefully show us how to move forward. But you can you can guess anything you want to to start. If you want to go back later and retry with some other uh, starting guess, you you certainly can. Um, but first step I want you guys to do now is to find the error of our estimate with compared to the actual score and divide this by two and place the results in, in column E. Um, so go to column E and look at, so you have the estimated score and you have, these are the actual scores for the match. So find the difference between those and divide those by two and put it in uh, column E right there. So why don't you guys all do that quick? I'll give you a minute or two. So it's pretty. It's a pretty easy calculation. So can do it fast. Oh, do you guys have pens? Yeah, I got a bunch of pens here. I don't know whose pens these are, but they're sitting up here, so I'll give them back at the end. May I have one more? Oh, sure. Okay, and you can split up the work to make it go fast, but I don't want to spend a ton of time on this because this is a, a very easy one. Um, so fill in all those pretty quickly, and uh, I'm going to keep going on. So, this value here in column E is our is an estimate of how like good or bad our predictions are for that half match. Okay, so high values or high absolute values are not as good of guesses, and low absolute values are better guesses. Um, so pretty straightforward. Um, so then the next step after you've done that is to go to column, column G and find the average of those errors for each of those teams, okay? Um, so for each, for each team there, uh, I've listed which matches they're in to help you out. And I want you to take the average of those errors and to put that into column G. So see if you can do that quick. And if you don't understand something, definitely let me know. A good way to work faster would be to one person start at the bottom, one person start at the top, and then cheat off each other. <laughs> Okay. 
guys got that pretty well. Here, here are the answers right here. If you want to, uh, you can copy those in uh, if you're not there yet. Um, so what we have here now in column G is essentially each team's, their average score, but it, it's, a it's not quite an average. It's actually half of their average because we did the divide by two a little bit earlier, but uh, it's, it's the same kind of idea as an average. Um, and so now, this step's super easy. Take the results from G and add them to uh, column I. And column I is, th those were our initial guesses for OPR, and since we guessed them all as zero, um, there's not much to do here. It's just copy-paste, basically. So. Oh, wait, you're in column J? Uh, and add them to column I. Oh, okay. Or, oh wait, sorry. Did I say that wrong? Add them to column Add them I. to I, put the results in J. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Caleb? Yes. Your 2175, uh, yeah. if you divide by 3, you get your 4.33, but there are four matches, so I divided by 4. Oh, did I do that wrong? I was like the first time. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, good catch. Yeah. Um, I wonder how badly that messes stuff up. Yeah. Let's see. Jump ahead. Oh, yeah. I did that badly. Yes, 3.25. Huh. Okay. Well, so we'll pretend we just divided by 3. Yeah, um, I guess I'm trying to think if it's better for you guys to follow my mistake or, or not. I'm wondering how much it's going to compound. Well, how good do you want calculators to be? Hmm? How good do you want calculators to be? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, it's 3.25. I guess go. Why don't we why don't we go with four point three three? We'll just all bask in my stupidity. Um, I'm just concerned it's gonna because all all my future results are, are based on that. Unless you guys well, I guess you guys do whatever you want. If you wanna look at wrong answers up here, then you can follow <laughs> along and put four point three three, or if you wanna do it the right way, more power to you, but I can't fact check anything any of your work. <laughs> Um, okay, so we, we put those results uh, in, uh, in column J over here. And uh, so this right here, this is our first iteration OPR estimate. So I have, you know, see in column I, I said estimated OPR like underscore zero. This is kind of a first iteration um, OPR estimate. And so it's much better than zero. These are all values that kind of make sense. Um, and so then the next step is to cycle through that whole process we just did again, except now we have better estimates for teams' OPRs, better guesses, instead of zero. Um, so I don't need to, you can all just go through this and uh, you should be able to see all the steps and uh, go and perform those same, um, all those same steps. Or, oh, well, yeah, I guess the next step is uh, estimated scores. So, yeah, take, take these and put them into column C for the estimated scores. So, find the teams that are in the match and pull out their estimated scores. Um, for, for C. Thank you. 
All doing good. Here's here's what I have for that policy. Um, again, it's probably wrong for 2175. But, um, you can take those or keep going. Um, but uh, so if we look at these quickly, um, if we look at compared to our first estimated scores, we're all zero, um, and the actual scores, you know, are all positive a couple points. So these aren't great guesses, but they're, they're something. But if you look at all of these now, these are much better estimates of, of the score. They're all within plus or minus uh, about two points or so. And uh, so then the idea is if you repeat this process iteratively, you can get better and better estimates of these scores and of the team's underlying contributions. Um, so uh, go ahead, uh, I'll give you guys a couple, couple minutes here, um, but you can just go through. Well, are there, any, are there any questions up to this point? Does everyone understand broadly the, the steps of this process? How did you get to that one? <laughs> so this one? Yes, how did you get to C? So C is, if you look in column J for your, your and you're, you're totally estimates, that. then you sum, you sum those for whichever team is in the match. So you find 2052's estimate, 2175's estimate, and you sum those together to get your to get the score. Alright, so yeah, why don't you guys all go ahead and Try to do the whole next iteration, the same process. Um, if you're confused about anything, let me know. I'll I'll be putting up the answers every little while here, but let me know. Let me know if you need anything.
Yes. So for the um, 2175, should we divide by 3 or 4? Probably divide by 3. Well, if you're following along with me, then what divide by 3. But uh, the correct way would be to divide by 4. So I need to go back and change that in the slides. But uh, yeah, apparently I don't know how to calculate averages. So you guys are really in trouble now. <laughs> How do you get negative values? Um, I guess when you subtract the A minus the C, you get what's Oh, I added them, not subtracted them. That's it. Never mind. All right. Um, so here are the here are the second iteration kind of OPR estimate. Um, Two point three, four point zero. <coughs> 4.1, 1.4, 4.2. Uh, and if you plug those back in to the top, um, you can see these getting closer to these score values. So seven goes to six. Oh, sure. Um, yeah. It's, I, I don't know exactly what the speed to go at with this, but. Uh, I, I've laid out all the formulas for you guys, so that you can you can definitely go back and do this all on your own time if you really like, you know, trying to calculate OPRs by hand. Um, but uh, I want to move forward and start talking about the the concepts. So um, so just just to reiterate here quick on what we all did. So the idea is you make some kind of score estimate, and then you find the error of that over here. And divide it by divide it by two because there's two teams in the match, um, and you use those. You find the average errors. That's what's over here. You find the average errors between your predictions and um, the actual results for each of those teams. Okay, and those errors are what you use to adjust your estimated like OPR value, the calculated contribution. Um, and and that's that's it. You just keep keep tweaking, keep updating your predictions, and you keep doing that iteratively until you converge to OPR. Um, here's what I did. Here's when I did seven different steps of this, as well as the 
actual actual OPR. Um, so I think now now I'm actually super curious about 2175 because this is this one's wrong as you guys identified. Um, but I think it still works out that it converges to the actual OPR. So you see this is seven iterations of this. So you see all these values are reasonably close. I, I'm actually wondering if that's incorrect setting for 2175. It doesn't maybe hurt them as much as it affects these other teams. Because notice this one's much closer to this than the other ones are over there. So that's something I need to look at. But broadly, what you should see here is the more of these iterations you do, the closer and closer you get to um, like actual OPR calculations. Um, so, okay, so I know that's I know that's a lot to take in. I I wanted to try to do some kind of physical having you guys do it yourselves because when people hear about OPR a lot, I know it, it kind of gets hand wavy and like oh it's linear algebra and stuff, but it's like. I wanted a kind of a way to show you can you can you could actually in theory solve the OPR for for teams at an event using some kind of methodology like this by hand uh, iteratively. Um, so that's broadly what I was looking for here. Um, any questions up to this point on what we did? Sweet. Uh, I am here for you guys. I can listen to myself talk all day, so if you have any questions, you definitely need to tell me. Um, <laughs> okay, so um, the last method we did is useful for you guys because you can do it by hand on, on a piece of paper just with a simple calculator app. Um, that's not how anybody ever calculates OPR in software or in uh, you know any kind of databases or anything. Um, this is the method I use in all of my OPR calculations, calculated contributions. Um, the idea of this one here is to use tools of linear algebra to simplify the processes that we did before. And instead of it being an iterative solution where you have to do step by step by step and just keep doing that forever, um, you can have a nice closed form formula to get the solution. So um, if you've had linear algebra before, here's the formula. Um, if you've worked with matrices before, you can, you can hopefully get a sense of what that formula is. Um, I'm not going to go through how it's derived. You can read, I have a link here on the, uh, for the Wikipedia article for how it's derived. But it's a nice, here's one formula right here that will, you just plug in, you find your X and your Y, and you plug it all in, and this beta here is the OPRs for your team, or the calculated contributions. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna work through this formula. I'm not gonna go through how it's derived, but I'm gonna explain the concepts behind what everything in here means. Okay. So this is the same schedule matrix as the this is the same schedule as what you guys had on your sheet. So what the first thing we need to do is to make a schedule matrix, and this is the this is the X, the big X, is the schedule matrix. Take all of this and put it into a schedule matrix. So what the schedule matrix looks like is you have teams up across the top, and you have half matches along the side. So in half match one, which would be uh, match one for the red side, you have 2052 is in the match, and you have 2175 is in the match. So they get ones right there. Um, and the other teams are not in that half match, so they get zeros. Okay. Half match two is the blue, the blue side of match one, and that has 45.36 in it and 51.72 in it, and so on and so forth. Okay, um, so not much to that. That's just simple bookkeeping. Okay. Now, if we look back up at this formula, um, we take this x, transpose it, and multiply it against itself, and what that does is you get this matrix down here. And this matrix is a matrix of how often each team plays with each other team. Okay, so 2052 plays in the same matches, half matches 2052 three different times. Okay, 
2175 plays in four different matches. Uh, here. And uh, 2052 plays with 2175 in one match in you know, red one. Um, never plays with 4536, but plays with 4607 and 5172. Okay, so that's all this is. This is this is another easy one. You can you, you can even skip over X and just go straight to this. Just you just have to count up, you know, which teams, uh, how often they play with other teams. Okay. So the next thing you do is matrix inversion, which is a whole big thing, and it's it's this is the, usually the most computationally expensive step in any process. Um, but uh, basically, the idea is now you have a matrix. You still have your teams. But now, instead of how many times teams are with other teams, these numbers now represent how important each team is for each other team's calculated contributions. OK? Um, so let me try to explain that. So if you look at 2052, if you look across and for all the teams, the highest team by far is 2052, is themselves, which makes sense. The vast majority of your calculated contribution is going to be based on your own performance, how good your team does. And that's, that's how you would want. Um, if you just wanted like to use like averages instead of OPRs, you would just set like this to uh, uh, one and you'd set all these other ones to zero. Okay, but what we're doing with calculated contributions is we're incorporating data from the other teams to make kind of a better guess or a better average of how good a team is. So the highest value for 2052 is themselves, obviously. Okay, um, 4607 and 5172 have reasonably high negative values. Okay, so what does that mean? Um, what that means is if these teams have lower scores in their matches, in, in their matches that means 2052's calculated contribution is higher. They're, they're inversely related. Now why would, why would that be? Um, anyone have any guess or any understanding of why there's that relationship? They never play together. Forty-six oh seven and no, they do play. Okay, one. Both yeah. teams play. It's one. Yeah. one does, the more weight the higher one. Is. Yeah. So if you have some high score, so if if twenty fifty two scores eight points in this match, mm -hmm. but all of fifty one seventy two's matches have low scores, all the other ones have low scores, that probably means fifty one seventy two isn't very good, mm -hmm. and that means more of that eight points is coming from 2052 than from 5172, okay? So your partners are going to have negative calculated, uh, negative values on this matrix, okay? Their, their relationship is, is <coughs> negative with you. And if you take it a step further, you have a team like 4536, who's also positive, and 4536 never plays with 2052. And that's the next step, is that's where, I'll, well, okay, you want all of your matches to be high, and you want all of 45, 36 matches to be high also. You know, if you want your, to have your calculated contribution be as high as possible. Because if the, if 45, 36 is partnered up, uh, like up here, 45, 36 is paired up with 51, 72, okay? So say this score is really high, um, and this score here, this eight that we already looked at, is very high. Um, but all the rest of 5172's matches are low scores. That means, okay, it was probably 4536 that scored a lot of those points there, and it was probably you that scored a lot of points over here. Okay, so that's what this matrix represents. It's how how important each other team is for your um, calculated contribution. Then the next step, we're going through the formula, we inverted all of this, and now we multiply it by the transpose of the schedule matrix. And now we get a matrix which shows how important each match is for your team. Okay, 
So instead of how important each team is, it's how important each match is. Okay? And this is pretty straightforward too. Same concepts as the last one. So 2052, their most important matches are red one, red three, and red four. And what's in red one, red three, and red four? Those are all matches 2052 is in. Makes sense. Um, the negative matches are like blue two and blue four. Blue two, we see they've got 2175 and 5172 in them. So those are both partners 2052 has had at some point. And blue four is the same, it has 4607 and 2175 in there. Okay? So that's, that's what all of this is. It's just how important is each half match for your team's calculated contribution. And now the very last step to actually get the calculated contribution, you take all of that and you multiply it by some kind of score matrix. So we have scores here and you multiply those together and you get these OPRs then. Okay? So that's that's the theory for, for that formula, step by step, what, what it all means. Um, there's one other method uh, I'm not going to talk about here. It's out of <laughs> it's too much to talk about in this presentation, but it's called Cholesky decomposition. Um, I don't actually use it. If you're using, if you're calculating OPR with a lot of teams or with a lot of matches, you should probably use Cholesky decomposition instead of the matrix inversion kind of thing we did. Uh, for when I looked at all events and all teams in 2018 and ran. The method we just did, or Cholesky data composition, it took about four hours or so to run that all on Excel on my laptop. Um, and Cholesky data composition takes on the order of a couple couple of seconds. So just keep that in mind. There are superior methods, but uh, you, I'd like you to take a linear algebra course before I try to explain Cholesky decomposition. Um, one last note about uh, all of these. Once you have seen how we've done, calculated these OPRs with all of this, um, you can actually calculate most of the other metrics used in FRC using that exact same methodology. Okay? You just have to swap in those scores that we used at that very last step, this, the Y at the end there. Instead of using total scores, you swap in whatever else you want, and that's how you get these other metrics. So calculate a contribution to the winning margin, Instead of using red score, you use red score minus blue score, or blue score minus red score. Uh, for defensive power rating, uh, you just use the opponent's score instead of your score. DPR sucks though, so don't use it. Um, for component OPRs, all, all the other calculated contributions, you just replace those scores with whatever other whatever other thing you're interested in. So end game points or tele out points or whatever else you want. You can do the exact same calculations. Um, one interesting note is that if you remember way back to our assumptions that we made for calculated contributions, one of them was linearity. And one property that arises out of that is that if any, any metrics or any data points you're plugging into the OPR formula, if they are linear, linearly related, then the uh, corresponding calculated contributions will be linearly related. So classic example here is calculated contribution to the winning margin is the same, is equivalent to OPR minus DPR, okay? Because calculated contribution to the winning margin uses red score minus blue score, and OPR uses like red score for red, and uh, DPR uses blue score when you're looking at red. Um, likewise, you could take, if you had calculated contributions to uh, autonomous points, teleat points, and penalty points, you sum them all up, um, you'll get normal OPR out of that. Um, okay, so that's, that's what I've got for OPR and calculated contributions and uh, those. So any any questions about all that? <laughs> all right. Um, what are we doing on time? We've got about 10 minutes left. Okay. Um, 
Okay, so here uh, I'm going to talk about ELO, uh, which is which is uh, a rating system. Um, ELO generally is used a lot in uh, if you've ever used some kind of online game or matchmaking algorithm for for chess or for video games. Um, those often use some variant of the ELO rating system in them. Um, the basic idea behind ELO is to give each team some kind of rating, use that to predict the results for a match, um, and then compare those predicted results to the actual results. And if those line up pretty well, you don't change the ratings much, but if uh, there's a big, if some team does way better than your expectation, you increase their rating, and if they do way worse than their expectation, you see their rating decrease, okay? Um, there's a whole bunch of different ways you can set up ELO systems. So here I'm just gonna be talking about the one that, I, that I've set up and that I use, okay? So just like for calculated contributions where we have to make some assumptions before we can go into it, you have to make some assumptions for ELO. So, uh, these are the ones that I chose because I think they're reasonable, but nothing inherent about them. They're just um, they're just my baseline for moving forward. So the biggest one I want is to maximize predictive power. By that I mean I want to predict the results of matches as best as I can to figure out who's going to win or lose as many matches as possible. Um, I also want to use as few parameters as possible. Uh, and only use parameters that improve predictive power in all recent FRC seasons. So I don't want some kind of system that is 2018 specific or 2016 specific because I want the ratings to carry over and I don't want to have to do a bunch of work right at the start of each season to figure out uh, which things to adjust. I just want to plug everything in right at the start of the season and have it work. Yep. Is that like something you did for like your system um, just to make it like easier? And like you could create an ELO system per, for each specific season. Correct, yeah, you certainly could. And uh, at some point I'll probably try to get more into that. Um, the problem I've found is that it's very, it's easy to it's easy to overestimate how much work you can do, you know, when the season's not going on. But when you have when you need to wait for the season to start to start pulling in data to build the system, and then it takes you four or five weeks to to get all that data in and to filter it out and make a good system, and now half the season's gone and you don't <laughs> and you don't have it. So somewhere along here, I'm going to try to. Uh, make some kind of an advanced ELO that does look at your specific things. But uh, at least for my standard one right now, yeah, I, I'm just looking for whatever attributes are remain constant across each year. Um, let's see. Yeah, and then yeah, here's another one related. Minimal tuning required at the start of a new season. Um, that's just something <laughs> that I need to do to be able to have a system ready to go each season. Uh, and uh, yeah, other ones are pretty straightforward. For reference, the average ELO in my system is pretty close to 1500, and an ELO difference of 400 indicates a stronger alliance is a 91% favorite, or will win 10 times as often as the weaker alliance. That's how most ELO systems are set up, but those are completely arbitrary. You could have your average set at zero, or uh, have 10 or one or something indicate um, a 91% favorite. Um, some key differences here between ELO and OPR. Um, they're, both, they're both good metrics and have some good uses, um, but uh, they have some differences. So, OPR, first and foremost, is a mathematical construct, linear regression, that happens to be well suited for FRC purposes. Um, so it has very strong mathematical foundations and useful mathematical properties, like, like linearity, like I talked about earlier. Um, ELO, on the other hand, is, I call it an ad hoc mess. It's just designed, it, you know, I just threw in whatever I could to get the best predictions possible out of it. Okay? It has some mathematical underpinnings, but uh, 
it's the key properties of it are experimentally derived empirical parameters that give give us the properties that we want, which is predictive power. Um, OPR is also calculated like all or nothing all at once on a whole bunch of different matches and teams um, without any outside information required. You can just take a list of matches, take a list of teams in those matches and uh, calculate OPR on it. Uh, ELO, in contrast, you always need to have some kind of seed value coming into it. Okay, so it's not sufficient just to say, here's what happened at this event. You also need to know what are the team's ratings going into the event. Um, and then they'll adjust up and down within that event. And you can use, you know, whatever seed you want, but the better your seed is, the better the ELO calculations are going to be. Um, the other thing to note is that ELO is zero sum, um, which means the average ELO is always going to be around 1,500. So if you look back at like my ELO workbooks, if you look back in 2002, the average team ELO was around 1,500. And if you look in 2019, the average team ELO is about 1,500. And teams have clearly gotten, on average, much better <laughs> from 2002 compared to 2019. But uh, the way the system is set up is that it's, uh, it's zero sum. So it's, it's always going to stay right around that same value. But OPR is in contrast. As teams get better, scores will get higher. Um, and uh, there's no, they're not fixed to an average like that. Um, OK, we just got a little bit left here. Um, yeah, I can talk about the key parameters here quick. Um, so for my ELO model, I have uh, seven different parameters, uh, which are experimentally derived. Um, and these, uh, oh, I said two, but there's three of them here. Are the, these are the only ones that are used during a season. Okay? So there's the K value for quals, which is 12. And that's, uh, if you look at this graph, here, the K value basically tells you how much, how important the last game is for a team. Okay, so K value of 12 works out to be about 5%. So if you just played a match, that match accounts for about 5% of your team's ELO, and the other 95% is, comes from whatever your rating was before that match. Okay, so if you play, you know, 20 matches or so, it's mostly those 20 matches that accounts for your rating, but there's still some amount that comes from previous matches. Um, K playoffs is three. So playoff results are only worth one fourth as much as quals results. Um, I can't tell you exactly why that is. All of these are experimentally determined. Uh, I could get better predictive power with three here than with five or with two, um, but I suspect the reason it's so low compared to the quals values is that once you get into playoffs, it's difficult to just look at match scores to determine how good individual robots are, because all those robots are working together to perform in those playoff matches. So it's hard to say which team's rating should be going up or down in playoff matches, because you, you, they're, they're so closely intertwined with your alliance partners, um, it's, it's difficult to extricate that. Um, and the last one here, uh, ELO to score ratio 0 0.004. Um, this is basically how to relate ELO ratings to in-season scores. Okay? <coughs> so, it means that if the Red Alliance has a total ELO 250 points above Blue Alliance's ELO, we would expect the final score to be one standard deviation in the Red Alliance's favor. So if it were 500 ELO points, you'd expect it to be about two standard deviations up over blue. So that's the relationship. Um, let's see. Here are a bunch of parameters used for between seasons to set C values, you can go back and look at those if you want. Um, 
Here's a quick ELO example. It's not as detailed as your worksheet, but it just works through how to find um, how to find the teams to see their ELO rating change up or down. Um, here's a quick graph I have of 2052 uh, and their ELO rating for each season. So you can see they start out rookie ELO of 1450 and they stay at around 1450 for the first couple of seasons. And uh, then, you know, they got a little bit better and have stayed pretty good for the last couple of years. Um, you can see, so each little data point down here is a match, okay? So you can see, you know, it matches where teams do good. You, you get these little spikes right here, and it matches where they underperform. You see them go down. Um, the gaps here are between seasons. So I didn't talk about that because uh, we're out of time, basically. But you can figure out how to make these jumps based on those other parameters. Um, that we saw. Um, and uh, I think I'm about at time, I think. Oh, I have, I have a couple minutes. Okay. Uh, we'll, I'm just going to keep speeding through these last couple slides, but uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, here's 2052, or just looking at the rookie season, and you can see how their ELO. Uh, changes up or down depending on the results. So here's their very first match, and you have the predicted winning margin in their first match of negative 12. So they're, they're probably gonna lose uh, this match. They're, they're underdogs in this match. And the actual winning margin of that match ended up being negative 14. Okay, <laughs> so this is a pretty good guess. So because it's a pretty good guess, their ELO doesn't change very much at all going into their next match, okay? So from, they started, they went in 1450, and they came out 1449. So basically the same. Next match, the predicted winning margin was 2.5, and the actual one was three. Um, so again, almost no change, because the predictions lined up very close with reality. Okay, this next one here, they predicted to win by about five points, and they ended up losing by two points. And so, drops a little bit there, not a ton. But on the next match, here's a big jump, okay? They come in as underdogs, uh, about, expected to lose by about 10 points or so. Um, only 40% chance of winning, but they end up winning by 22 points, okay? So, nine, so like negative 10 up to 22, that's a, like a 32 point difference, and the score standard deviation in 2007 was about 32, okay? So what that means is you have one score deviation change, so then you use the full k value, k equals 12, to go from 1447 to 1459, okay? So that's, that's where that k, k quals comes in, because it's a, it's a quals match. So it goes up by 12 points when you beat your expectations by one standard deviation. Uh, I, think that's, I think that's our time. But uh, that's, that's the idea there. Um, yeah, I have a couple other slides in there uh, you guys can look at, but that's the bulk of it. Um, but yeah, I think that's about it. Hopefully you guys learned <laughs> something, got something out of this. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to stick around and let me know, or let me pull up. Uh, da, 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 da. Yep, you can feel free to reach out to me at Chief Delphi or uh, by email, um, and all of my work uh, should be on GitHub, so you can pull out my scouting database or event simulators or ELO stuff in there uh, if you want to take a look at any of that. So thank you for coming. Uh, have a good rest of your day. <laughs> thank you.